What's up everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Richard on Data. If you're new here, my name is Richard and this is the channel where we talk about data, data science, statistics, and programming. Subscribe for all kinds of content just like this and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. This is my data science statistics tutorial series where I give you all the statistics knowledge that you need to conquer the data science world. In statistics, there are certain distributions that you absolutely need to know. Random variables are distributed in particular ways, and those distributions provide us very easy, very useful, convenient frameworks for modeling real-world activities. Now, there are more distributions out there than I can possibly hope to count, and I'm not saying you need to know every single one of them, but there are certain ones which show up everywhere, and they're absolutely critical to understand. The normal distribution is hands down the most important and most common distribution in all of statistics. And part of that is because of what's known as the central limit theorem, which essentially tells us that a lot of activities which are repeated over and over again can be modeled using a normal distribution, but that's a different topic for a different day. Additionally, a ton of statistical tests out there assume, at least from a theoretical standpoint, that something follows a normal distribution. Just some properties about the normal distribution. First and foremost, it is used for modeling continuous data only, not discrete data. And as I talk about in my video on mean, median, and mode, the normal distribution is nice in the sense that all of those metrics, mean, median, and mode, are equal to each other. Also, the normal distribution is completely defined by two parameters. That's the mean, often denoted by the symbol mu, and the variance, often denoted by sigma squared, or alternatively, the standard deviation, which is denoted by sigma. Then there's what's known as the empirical rule, which says that when you have a normal distribution, 68% of your values are within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% of values are within two standard deviations of the mean, and then 99.7% of values are within three standard deviations of the mean. Also associated with the normal distribution is one super important metric, and that's known as the z-score, also sometimes referred to as the standardized score. Now, these sound super fancy, but they're not. A z-score is just the number of standard deviations that a measurement is away from the mean. Now, you don't need to have a normal distribution in order to calculate this, and in fact, these show up in contexts other than a normal distribution, but the normal distribution does give these very nice and useful properties, as we'll see in a minute here. We're going to work through a couple examples here, and you'll see how simple and easy it is to use the normal distribution. To do it, you need a normal probability table. Also, if you know how to program in R or Python, you can use that instead. Most graphing calculators or scientific calculators have this functionality built in. But when you're just getting started, it is easier to use a normal probability table at first. The link to this one will be in the description, but you can find these all over the internet. It is important to know how to read these, and this will make most sense when you see an example, but let's start with just one case. So on the left side here, you have the digit in the ones place, and from left to right at the top, you have the digit in the second place. That is your z-score, and then the numbers on the inside of the table are the area to the left of each of those z-scores. So what does that mean? Well, let's take the value for a z-score of 1.00, for example. We look in the table, that area is 0.8413. Now, this means if you have a z-score of 1, you are in the 84.13 percentile of all such measurements. Now, putting that another way, the chance that some randomly selected measurement is less than that is 84.13%. All right, let's look at a real world example. So there's a study out there which tells us that baby birth weight is normally distributed, that the mean of all such baby birth weights is 7.3 pounds, and the standard deviation is 1.3 pounds. Additionally, we know that a baby born at less than 5.5 pounds is considered low birth weight. So we're gonna ask two questions. Number one, what's the chance that a baby is born at low birth weight? 
that is what's the probability that a baby is born at less than 5.5 pounds and then number two how heavy does a baby need to be to be in the 95th percentile of birth weight so for both of these questions we're going to make use of our z-score formula z equals x minus mu over sigma and this basically again this just tells us how far our measurement is away from the mean in standard deviations in our first question what's the probability that a baby is born with less than 5.5 pounds at birth weight we start by calculating the z-score at 5.5 pounds so we do the math here we end up with a z equal to negative 1.38 now this tells us that a baby that's born with that birth weight is at 1.38 standard deviations under the mean. Now we have to go to our normal probability table. We're going to look up z equals negative 1.38 and we find that the area to the left of that point is 0 0.0838. Well, we're done. That is our answer. The probability that a randomly selected baby weighs less than 5.5 pounds at birth is 0 0.0838, that is 8.38%. And then our question about the 95th percentile of baby birth weight, how heavy does the baby need to be to be in the 95th percentile? That's a very similar question, we just have to do some of the math in reverse. So we're actually going to start with our normal probability table and we're going to look for the z-score corresponding the closest to an area to the left of 0.95. So you're going to look down your table and you're going to see that the closest z-scores to that are 1.64 and 1.65. Now in this case it doesn't really really matter which one you pick. I like to take the average of the two to get the absolute closest estimate. So we're going to start with a z-score of 1.645. That's the z-score you need to be in the 95th percentile. And then we just solve for the measurement. We have 1.645 equals x minus 7.3 over 1.3. We solve for the measurement. We have to be at 9.4 pounds to be in the 95th percentile here. Now that you've seen a couple examples and hopefully you get the idea of how to work with a normal distribution and z-scores and how simple it really is, just one last thing to point out. We've been working this whole time with a normal distribution where the mean is 7.3 and the standard deviation is 1.3. Let's say you took every data point in that distribution and you subtracted the mean and you divided by the standard deviation. Well, you would actually arrive at a distribution where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. And that's actually the foundation for the normal probability table working in the first place. A z-score is distributed distributed normally with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. This is actually the foundation for what's called a z-test, which is what's going on in the background of tons of statistical hypothesis tests out there. Once you understand z-scores, you're that much closer to understanding how more complex statistical tests work, running them, and then knowing exactly what their conclusions are telling you. Also, when you're doing more complex exercises like modeling, z-scores can be very helpful and useful inputs to the model rather than using the raw variables themselves, so just a thing to keep in mind. So thanks everybody for watching this video. If you found it helpful, smash the like button, and then I'll see you all next time. Until then, Richard, on data.